Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. It's that boy G playing. Don't give a damn. He cooler than the fan. Walking real tall. Some say he's man. So what's going on, Big Ed? When Houston, Texas, man. How you doing? Man, I'm straight, man. Can't complain. Appreciate you having me. my boy. Change of plans in the building, man. For sure. Man, like I said, I appreciate you coming. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to say like, I'm taking my hat off to you, man. Um, this is a very um. I ain't gonna say stressful, I ain't gonna say that. But it's, the job's not easy. Hell nah. Being an interviewer, <coughs> you know, and I've seen you say, like, you know, this is just Houston, I'm one of the top interviewers in Houston. Do you still rightfully hold that title? Best interview in Houston. Oh, I hold best. that title, the best interview in Houston. Mm -hmm. First of all, I said that shit before anybody. So that's first and foremost why I'm the best interviewer in Houston, because niggas wasn't even on that type of time. I, let, I said that to let people know how serious I was about it. You feel me? Like, I wanted boys to know, like, hey, he take what he do serious. So, it came with that. Then on top of the, wasn't nobody going as hard as me with the interview. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a blogger, more say. Like, I don't have an Instagram page that's keeping up and pr uh, promoting the latest drama, the latest news, or anything like that. So when I came with that best Houston interview, and a little bit of it was to like make niggas feel a way. Cause I feel like when you say you the best at anything, niggas is gonna feel a way even if they don't give a fuck about it. Yeah. It's like they gotta say, they said calling himself the best or something. The nerve of this crazy ass nigga. Like who the fuck is you nigga? Yeah. Like when a nigga come out and say he the best rapper, it's like niggas is like, what the fuck? That nigga need to shut the fuck up. Like, even when Lil Wayne came out with it, right? Yeah. When Lil Wayne said he was the best rapper alive since the best rapper retired, niggas was like, for a second it was like, what the fuck is Lil Wayne talking about? Then when you thought about it, you was like, who the fuck going hard like that? <laughs> like, who, who, who? Then it created conversation, but that right there, he knew that he was finna step it up and he was finna mash with it. Same thing with me. I already was going crazy hard. I did 42 interviews in 31 days yeah. last year. October 8th to like November 9th. I did 42 interviews in that time. In one month, I was like, ain't nobody going this hard to me in the game, period. But I knew I ain't touched the whole nation and worry, so I just claimed Houston because I knew can't no nigga say they going harder than me in Houston. Ain't no nigga went that hard in Houston, period. Well, I set up the interviews, I pull up to the interviews, I set up the camera, they, uh, take the pictures of, like, get somebody with us that's there with them or with me to take the picture, promo uh, take it home, edit it, release it to YouTube, and put it on Instagram all by myself. So I was like, nah, nigga, ain't nobody went this motherfucking hard ever, bro. One deep in this shit, hood to hood, around the city, and I'm doing interviews, you know what I'm saying? I'm not on Instagram, shout out to all the other bloggers in Houston. Shout out to all the bloggers. I don't consider myself a blogger, but yeah. shout out to the bloggers and what they do because it's needed for this rap game for sure. Yeah. You know, I work with the blogs. You know, I work with the bloggers, but I'm a personality, you feel me? Yeah, and I heard you say that. And yeah. like, I'm, I spoke to Terry Blue, shout out to Terry Blue and Big D. Now, I, Both my guys. Cool people, man. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that was you started it or Big D. I don't know who started it. Yeah. But whoever started it, and um, Spare Springer, and yeah, Real like Tunes, spare, and Real all those guys, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know who started it. We gonna start, we gonna start interviewing each other and cross promote. Yeah. I don't know if that was you. I don't know who started it. But I know it's a beautiful thing. I saw it in Texas. Okay. Going on in Texas. I'm in Louisiana. Okay. I'm, I can say, as far as me and changing plans, my brand, we got other brands, but in my area, it's just solely me. Mm -hmm. As far as the brand, when it comes to putting out talent, okay. I, I had to come tap into y'all, because people got to come here. Fact. Regardless of the fact, if you want a tour run, you got to come to Houston, you got to go to Dallas, Fact. San Antonio, you got to go. Fact. You know what I'm saying? So Houston, one of the biggest cities in the world. Mm -hmm. But I say to say this, like, like, do you feel, do you feel like, it's like the best time ever as far as a collective of black people to put on black people. 100%. 100%. Black people for sure. Shit so. Uh, I'm black before anything. A lot of black people don't take pride in being black. 
You know what I'm saying? I think we could come to that agreement as a whole. I'm not speaking on anybody's personal situation. Black people in themselves, out of every race, we have the least amount of pride in our heritage and our skin color, and it's not 100% our fault. But this is the time where black people can show love to each other. This is the black time. This is the time for black entrepreneurship. Whether you believe it or not, we talking about generational wealth, man. We ain't talking about just going to the mall, getting enough money to get you a Rolex, designer Cartier, and uh, get the latest uh, Dior drip in the Miri. Shout out to all that. I, I like some of that shit too. I don't. I don't have that shit, but I. I see that's what the rappers is wearing. You know, I got to keep up to what the rappers is wearing. But this ain't the time to just buy a Mike Amiri. This ain't just the time to go get designer clean and get a new form. This is your time to cement yourself into having money, time where you can make money in your sleep. Black people, we got the spotlight on us. The situation with Corona and George Floyd together created an opportunity for our voice to be heard. The, 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 a lot of white people woke up. You know what I'm saying? They woke up when they seen what happened to George Floyd because everybody was trapped in the house. Everything was slowed down, so niggas woke up and they and the white people speaking up for us, whether they did it because they felt bad or maybe because they did it because they felt human. I feel like with the coronavirus, it set everybody down. It made everybody say, man, we're not better than nobody. We got to put a mask on like they got to put a mask on. You heard rich ass niggas. I'm gonna I'm gonna get one example who stuck to my mind the most. Talk to him. He wasn't the only one, but it was several. P and QC said, "This shit reminds me that money don't mean a goddamn thing right now. Nobody's better. Having money don't mean shit right now." But of course, that was like the first month mm -hmm. of the Corona shit because nobody knew. We didn't know, nigga. We didn't know if the world was going in. We didn't know if we was gonna run out of food. We don't know if we, niggas thinking, man, do I got this shit? Niggas couldn't go get tests, we, we didn't know. So everybody was like, bro, I'm not better than nobody at this point. Nigga, like, I can't even go to the grocery store at a certain time, nigga. The people serving food restaurants is the most, the people who got food restaurants and gas stations and shit are the most important people in the world right now. Try, try, try going, to a, um, going through a hurricane, try that, when there ain't no lights. Been through. Eight to 18. Not like, not yeah. like, not like Louisiana, but I've been through Ike and I've been through Harvey. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've been through Ike and I've been through Harvey. So I understand. I think I was without power during Ike for like two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks? About two and a half. Ooh, About two and a half. And, and, but it was some people that went out over a month in, uh, in, in, in the Houston area. It just depends on where you was located at. Because some people, their power went out and then they was back on the next day.